Hey, Phoebes. How you doing, girl? This is quick stuff for this week. I cannot recognize the verdict of guilty. It was my misfortune to become entangled in these atrocities. But these misdeeds did not happen according to my wishes. It was not my wish to slay people. Once again, I would stress that I am guilty of having been obedient, having subordinated myself to my official duties and obligations of war service and my oath of allegiance and my oath of office. And in addition, once the war was started, there was also martial law. I did not persecute the Jews with avidity and passion. That is what the government did. At that time, obedience was demanded, just as in the future, it will also be demanded of the subordinate. That was the defense of Adolf Eichmann, one of the most prominent killers in the Nazi regime. It was an attempt to defend himself against accusations of war crimes and crimes against humanity. And him, like many other Nazis during the trials that happened after World War II, tried to defend himself by saying that he was just following orders. And it actually became a little bit of a meme in the 20th century. I was just following orders, not being an excuse, was a common thing for a lot of history because we still had people living who remember the Nazi regime. My cat's about to jump in my lap. And so I thought the days of trying to say that you were excused from a war crime because it was legal in your country and you were following orders was no longer an excuse. This all changed when I uh, realized last week that Gina Haspel, who has committed something that has been considered a war crime, a crime of torture, something that has been confirmed as torture before, after World War II, got away by saying that the torture that she committed under her watch was her just following orders, and that it was legal at the time. So let's break down into what Gina Haspel is accused of. I say accused, she doesn't hide that she did these things. The first thing is that she ran a black site in Thailand. After taking over, she oversaw three waterboardings on her own. Now, there was a lot of attempts, especially during the Bush years, to try and not call torture torture. The new euphemism is, of course, enhanced interrogation. Whenever you hear that, it's torture. But also there were attempts to say that waterboarding was not torture. It's a process in which you lie somebody down, put a cloth over their face, and pour water down their nose and mouth, uh, basically simulating the feeling of drowning. This, of course, is considered torture because after World War II, we prosecuted Japanese interrogators for doing the exact same act, verifying that waterboarding is indeed an act of torture, which is a war crime. Several years later, uh, against the desire of the government at the time of uh, Obama, Gina Haspel was also involved with destroying evidence of these waterboardings. All the tapes that were recorded of these torture sessions taking place were destroyed by her and her compatriots. So, I mean, the CIA is no stranger to committing war crimes. So now, even in the open, even with elected officials trying to scrutinize it, she got away with committing war crimes. Not only is she someone who should be in prison under the things established under the Nuremberg Agreement, I mean, George Bush should also be in prison, but that's a different story. But uh, the reason that she's even still having a job and now she's now in charge of the CIA has to do with the fact that after taking office, Obama decided to not prosecute anybody who was involved with the war on terror, the false war in Iraq and the program of torture and extraordinary rendition, which is basically the government kidnapping people in the 2000s. It turns out that the reason why is because Obama's plan was to use remote controlled airplanes to not capture people anymore, but literally just flat out murder them without any trial or anything whatsoever, including an American citizen. Isn't that great, Phoebes? This is, of course, an example of American exceptionalism. This comes up a lot in the study of American cultures. I remembered because American exceptionalism is one of the most common words you'll ever hear if you ever study American studies, which I have a master's degree in. And in American studies, American exceptionalism is the idea that America is always the exception to the rule. You know, it is illegal for any country to invade another country simply because they want to steal their resources unless it's America, because America does, when America does it, it's right. This applies to the genocide of indigenous peoples, the enslavement of African Americans, and uh, so on and so on throughout American history. There's always been a rule that the world needs to follow, according to the United States, and then the rules that America needs to follow, which can be an exception to any of those rules. This is exacerbated by the United States becoming the central empire that currently has military dictatorship over the planet. And there is also this idea that, oh, well, you know, she was following orders, she was doing something that was legal, and, you know, 
Didn't you ever see the Milgram experiment that when told to do something horrible, even by an authority figure, it's uh, in our nature somehow to follow along with that order. We are naturally predisposed to follow hierarchies. This is also an argument that is leveled against people who are egalitarian or anarchists or something like that. And usually what's pointed to is a seminal study that happened in early psychology before uh, rigorous standards and or ethics, by the way, the Milgram experiment. Unfortunately, this kind of hurts. The Milgram experiment has come under scrutiny in recent years. And it turns out that Milgram himself was uh, weeding out the data to make his pre-assumption that people naturally follow the orders of hierarchical figures. Turns out to be problematic. He was throwing out all the cases of people who refused the cases. And that completely upends the idea of the study. And it shows that, yes, even when you're in a command structure, you can tell the difference between right and wrong. And it even says in the Roman statutes under international law that if the war crime that you're committing, even if it is legal in your country, and even if you are ordered to do so, will be considered a crime if it is something that you know to be morally wrong. And I don't know about you guys, well, seeing all the people who love Trump and his like pro-torture stance, maybe this is wrong, but uh, torture, bad. I thought this was like the one thing we had figured out. Man, I hate the world these days. Anyways, I have a thing to tell you that is on Saturday this week. So uh, May 19th, 2018, myself, Thought Slime, and Mexi, we're gonna meet at Disgraceland in Toronto at 7 p.m. And we're going to have a big meetup, meet some viewers, have some drinks, eat some foods. It's a vegan friendly place, but it's not like a vegan only place. So we're gonna have a really good time. Everyone's gonna be really happy. I'm Tristan. This is Phoebe. Say hello, Phoebe. She actually never meows. This cat, I've heard this cat meow like three times. Anyways, peace out.